In this video, I will be playing Terraria, but I start with one damage Bury the Light aka Yamato from Default May Cry. But here's the catch, every time a boss gets defeated, its damage gets added by 10. This video is a cry for help for my journey to insanity. Oh, also, this weapon is from the Stars Above mod. At first, it might just seem like your basic ordinary cool sword that has a point and click feature, very simple and practical to use. However, it has a secondary attack called Judgment Cut and it is extremely strong. The downside, it is hard to accurately hit targets with it, as the attack needs time to charge and it is very slow. Not to mention, enemies in Terraria are very fast, especially hard mod bosses. Before I start, I do not like begging nor putting tons of meat rolls in my video. However, I make less than an average McDonald's worker, even with 200,000 subscribers. So please help me get to 300,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Thank you again and enjoy the video. I created a character named Virgil. Of course, like in any Terraria playthrough, it starts off with a fairy pumping action of chopping down trees. Not to forget the obligatory slime death row torture experiment. Your honor, I did it for self-defense. Unlike your usual Terraria playthrough, in Stars Above you get to choose between two women, just like the old times. I chose the blue-haired one because I like my woman just like how I like my chicken. Insane. Oh god, I'm already starting to regret my choices. Shut up, woman. It is time to venture deep down the caves. Ah, the sword also emits light. That's awesome. But even with decent lighting, it doesn't help you from being brutally crushed by a random falling boulder. I proceed to chop down some more woods and build some insta houses for NPCs to move in. Our first base is looking decent. I met a squirrel NPC that sells human organs. I went back to the cave and explored it quite a bit. I got a band of regeneration and a magic mirror from a gold chest. Just say, my fucking Yamato only deals one damage. I am barely damaging these skeletons. Oh god, oh fuck. Woman, you are not helping. I got brutally slaughtered by cave monsters. I got a lucky horseshoe from a gold chest and stupidly died to my own dynamite and to another boulder. I spent a whole minute just to kill a salamander. However, I did get a rally yo-yo drop from it. Well, that's lucky. I encountered the glowing mushroom biome. But then I got brutally ran over by a boulder moving at snail speed. How is that even possible? I mined down a lot of ore such as iron and platinum. Then I brutally slaughtered an innocent family of slimes using judgment card. As I was mining down, I found a minecart rail. This minecart rail led me to a ruby gem cluster, which is very nice. I even got an eye of Tulhu summoning item from the minecart trip. Right when I thought it was my lucky day, the minecart led me to a lava pit, brutally incinerating me to death. Awesome. On the bright side, now I can craft a ruby hook, which gives me the ability to grapple to objects. I am alone in this hell on earth. And a platinum chainmail. I drank a gravitation potion that we found earlier, and found a sky island that has a house with no doors. It contained the fledgling wings inside the chest, but even with the newly obtained wings we got, it still can't save us from the harpy gangbang circumcision torture method. I crafted a tungsten helmet to cover my eyes from this ugly world, and I bought my favorite explosives, boom shurikens. On that night, I felt an eye presence coming inside of me. Clearly, I did not see that coming. I can tell a gigantic eyeball is approaching me, woman. Thank you. You did not need to tell me twice. And as you can see, our Yamato aka Buri the Light is barely tickling the gigantic eyeball with its one damage. Our only hope is just to use the special judgment cut attack, which you can also see is quite hard to land. Being cornered by the mini eyes, I thought it is over for me. But luckily, my judgment cut got fully charged just right in time. And I was able to do a semi-clean hit on the big and its minions, successfully taking it down to its second phase. On the second phase, Mr. I moves much faster, so I decided to take down the mini servants first. This way, I could focus on dodging and landing a clean hit. And at last, once the big guy got tired of dashing, I accurately timed my judgment cut and landed a very clean hit, successfully defeating the giant eyeball in one fell swoop. That felt extremely satisfying for some reason. I got the shield of Tulhu which lets me dash away from child support. And now our Yamato deals 10 damage. Finally, after all that, we resume our cave exploration journey. I got another magic mirror. This is the fourth magic mirror I found in this playthrough. Let's just say that my cave looting luck is horrifyingly bad. Luckily, I found decent loads in the glowing mushroom biome chest, such as flippers, some decent materials, and another lucky horseshoe. I farmed down some life crystals too to increase my HP. And finally, I found a good gold chest that contained a cloth in the bottle. I killed a gladiator skeleton and it dropped its helmet. Why is this woman feeling sorry for an enemy that is actively trying to kill me? And of course, I had to end the cave exploration journey with a bang. Literally, I crafted a full set of platinum armor. Then I decided to use a teleportation potion for fun. It teleported me deep inside the underground jungle biome. Uh, uh, I don't think it's a good thing that it teleported me here. However, I did get some good loot. How do you fit a whole extracting nutter inside a small chest? 
As I was strolling through the jungle, I encountered a beehive. I just wanted to take a look on what's inside of the hive. But by accident, I regretted on what happened in Japan on August 6, 1945 to a family of bees. Oh fuck, I think I enraged their mother. Look, it was just a silly little accident. I did not know my le bomb could kill le people. I had to make a quick makeshift arena. Yet again, another silly little accident that fucked me over when I'm extremely unprepared. What buzzes is black and yellow and goes along the bottom of the sea. Huh? A bee in a submarine. In. What the fuck does that even mean? We're in business now. Our Yamato now deals 20 damage. I got a Hermes boot from a jungle chest and an Uncle of the Wind from a jungle shrine. I drove a minecart into jungle caves and almost crashed to a lava pit. Can't fool me twice. Only to have my trip ended by getting obliterated by a flame gazer. I was messing around with a Starfarer menu, but my single IQ digit brain couldn't really understand what the fuck is going on. We'll figure this out later, I promise. Then I went to the Crimson Biome. Our goal here is just to bomb down two Crimson Orbs. I also made a quick arena while we are here. You know what? Fuck it. Might as well bomb a third one and summon the brain of Tuluhu. In the fight, I focus on defeating the small brain minions first. They can get pretty annoying and murderous if you let them swarm you. Just like children in real life. The brain of Tuluhu is attacking our mind directly by inserting internet articles on why everyone should pay their taxes and why it is a good thing inside our head. Little did he know, I donated all my money to a random female VTuber stream. Please collab with me, Koseki Bijo. I am in desperate need of attention from women. I guess I blowed his mind. My brain is not braining anymore. Our Yamato now deals 30 damage. I crafted the King Slime summoning item. Then I magic mirror my way back to home. Then I summon and started the fight against the obese King Slime. This should have been our first boss that we fought. But I got a little bit too silly. At this progression of the game, we are basically melting the king slime like butter. I could have even easily killed him with just few basic attacks. But I'm a nice guy, so I wanted to give him a quick and painless death using judgment card. But he decided to dodge it, making an embarrassment out of me. Well, I guess death by cock and ball torture that is. I unlock a new ability in the fucking woman thing. And now our Yamato deals 40 damage. I crafted a whole set of crimson armor. Then I use a gravitation potion to explore the sky islands. I got a shiny red balloon which is very useful for increasing jump height. A star fury sword that could have been much more useful if we gotten this earlier. And another fledgling wings. The day turned night and as we went to the left direction, we efficiently landed near the dungeon. I made a quick arena, thanks again to quality of life mods. And now that we are here, let's awaken the inner racism within this homeless British YouTuber. Oh god, turns out he is an average French male. Did the meteorite just landed in the background? That's interesting. Even after playing Terraria for 4000 hours, I am not joking. I still don't understand which part of Skeletron I should focus on defeating first. Is it just me or it is very fucking hard to land a clean hit of my judgment card? Though I did land a single successful judgment card to one of Skeletron's arm, but again, none to its main head. Riddle me this, Skeletron, how do skeletons in France say hello? Bonjour. I think I just gave him the worst way to die. Our Yamato now deals 50 damage. Now we can enter and explore the dungeon. I spent around 30 minutes doing the usual dungeon stuff. I got some loots like the Blue Moon Flail. And I found a bonded mechanic NPC. And finally after a while I got the thing I'm looking for, a Cobalt Shield. After that I returned back home. I organized my inventory and chest. And on that night, I decided to test the Yamato's damage against 5 Eye of Tuluhu. Because why the fuck not? Needless to say, these eyeballs did not stand a single chance against our 50 damage. Yamato. Just a single judgment card easily brings all of them down from 100 to 0. It was indeed very satisfying to obliterate every single one of those eyes. I bought some potions from this NPC, and I deployed an instant elevator to get to the underworld. Finally, we have reached France. I drank an obsidian skin potion. This way, I can use my trusty boom shurikens to mine down a lot of hellstones. I am not sure if mining is the correct term for this. I also opened a few shadow chests. Not that useful. I went back home to a goblin army invasion. At first, I tried to ignore them and give them mercy. But one of their mages decided to annoy me while I was crafting stuff. So I decided to completely make the entire goblin race go into extinction. And of course, I had to do it with style. I crafted a lot of hellstone bars. I turned them into molten pickaxe and a whole set of molten armor. Then I decided to fight the torch god by placing 100 torches underground. Believe it or not, despite the 4000 hours in Terraria, this was the first time I'm fighting against the torch god. I was a bit confused at first. Let's just say that I was a tiny bit unprepared for what the fight has to offer. So the 
torch god ended up burning my arsehole. On the second attempt, I did not know placing a campfire counts as a light source. It definitely caught me by surprise. Ah yes, my favorite enemy in the entire game of Terraria, torches. However, after delivering the secret spark aura known to mankind, also known as abusing the shit out of our shield of Tuluhu Dash, I successfully defeated the torch god for the first time. The challenge rewarded us with gay torches. Why did we even do the torch god? Before moving on, I built more NPC prison. We also unlocked some new starfarer abilities that I won't bother to read. Then I explored the underground snow biome to get some materials. On that night, a blood moon started while I was organizing my inventory. While beating up lesser creatures during blood moon, a genius idea sparked into my mind. Instead of wasting my time fighting the boring lesser creatures, let's summon the deer clops during the blood moon. Right now, our Yamato is doing really good DPS. Honestly, I did not need to do my judgment cuts anymore to deal good damage or to commit murder to our enemies. The basic slashes are more than enough. But in the dictionary of a true terrorist, there is no such thing such as good enough DPS. The bigger the numbers, the better. Using a terribly landed judgment cut, we finish off their clops. And now our Yamato deals 60 damage. While I was riding a minecart in the underground caves, I encountered a bone goblin tinkerer. Finally, took him long enough to appear. I bought rocket boots and tinkerer workshop from this guy. Buying these two things finally gave me access to upgrade my accessories. Obtaining myself a cloth in a balloon and lightning boots. Now we should be ready for the final challenge of play hard mode. So I jumped on the elevator once more. Back to France once again. I made a quick makeshift hell bridge. Then I obtained a voodoo doll by killing a random French civilian. I threw the doll into the lava to summon the wall of flesh, also known as Get Good Wars average fanbase. My first instinct was to focus on destroying the hungries because they remind me of nasty children. And I hate children. If you are what you eat, I am a child at heart. One day, if I have a child, I'm going to gaslight them into thinking Santa is real. And will fucking kill them if they don't get good marks on their exam. I am really bad at landing my judgment card. But honestly, we are now fine even if we don't land them properly. Because our basic attack is doing really solid DPS. As expected, we defeated the towering mass of Tumor and Gonorrhea with ease. We are now in hard mode. I consume a demon heart to increase my accessories a lot. I got this weird item called the Shattered Disc. Of course, my first instinct was to use the item. Oh god, it summoned the Vagrant of Time and Space from Five Nights at Freddy's. I got impaled by a giant fucking sword. And oh yeah, our Yamato now deals 70 damage. Let's summon the Vagrant of Time and Space once again. While typing the script for this video, I ate 3 raw eggs and now I have severe diarrhea. Yet again, I got impaled by a giant fucking sword. I manually hammered down some crimson altars. But I just remembered, I can just use my boom shurikens. Now that it is daylight, I decided to fight the Vagrant of Time and Space once again for the third time. This time, he apparently did not summon his giant sword for some reason. This does not feel like a Terraria boss at all. Am I in Undertale? What the fuck is this green box? This fight feels like a cursed crippled love child of Toho Bullet Hell Degenerates and Undertale fanfic Wattpad writers. Honestly, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So, I ended the misery out of this crippled creature with just the basic attacks of our Yamato. Well, that was definitely something of an experience. I upgraded some of my skills in the Starfarer menu, and apparently we got a new special skill. This special skill summons a giant fucking sword to land on our foes. Those two deaths of me being impaled by the giant sword makes a lot of sense now. I met the wizard NPC. I mined down some palladium ores and crafted a palladium drill. Then I mined down oracle cum. Using that, I crafted the hard mode unfill and the cum drill. I also crafted the destroyer summoning item. I got this conch while I was exploring the underground. This conch allows me to instantly teleport to either side of the beaches. Then I mined down some titanium ores. I crafted a hard mode forge and a full set of titanium armor. Now we should be ready for the mech bosses. But before that, we should fight the queen slime first. The more bosses we beat, the better. At first, the fight went pretty smoothly. I was able to keep a distance between queen slime and myself. But then, I tried to use my special skill which summons the giant sword to impale queen slime. In the process of doing so, I got overwhelmed by the things happening on my screen. I blame YouTube shorts for ruining my focus and attention span. I should have killed the smaller slime goons first because they have the capabilities to cause testicular torsions to any targets 3 meters away from their location. On the evening, I summoned the queen slime again. But this time, I give more attention to the smaller slime goons first, especially in dodging their testicular torsion orbs of death. I was very confident that my next judgment cut would land perfectly. How did that judgment cut not land still confuses me. However, my second judgment cut, despite landing it terribly, apparently landed and obliterated queen slime. 
what the fuck? I got this queen slime mount which lets me kinda fly. Who needs wings when you can use a decapitated child of queen slime? Our Yamato now deals 80 damage. On that night, I decided to start the battle against a mechanical trio. Our first mech boss will be the destroyer. But jokes on him, the only thing he will be destroying is my Scrumptious Gluteus Maximus. Why did I decide to write the script for this video while I'm in my toilet having an explosive diarrhea? It was slightly surprising to see destroyer not being one-shotted by our Yamato. I kinda expected it to get obliterated within seconds of seeing my long deadly stick of tax evasion. But nonetheless, we were still able to destroy the destroyer with ease. Our next mechanical boss will be the twins. I don't know if any of you have noticed yet, but I'm still using the fledgling wings from pre-hard mode, which is not a good idea, especially considering the twins stay airborne all the time. But who needs a good pair of wings when you have the power of a schizophrenic anime woman summoning giant swords by your side? I swiftly took care and finished off the twins. I use judgment cut to obliterate spasmatism and I use some simple basic attacks to finish off retinazer. Now our next mechanical boss is Skeletron Prime. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm making Troaria videos for a living. Do you guys ever feel like one day disappearing completely without leaving a single trace? I am thinking the rural city of Villa Stas Estrellas in Antarctica is a great place to start. Just a random thought I had in mind. <coughs> Shit, I got off track again. With the help of our portable schizophrenic anime woman, I was able to finish off Skeletron Prime. And with the defeat of Skeletron Prime, all the three mechanical bosses are down. Now our Yamato deals 90 damage. From the hallowed bars and souls we got, I crafted a drugs and a full set of hallowed armor. I always love the aesthetic of hallowed armor. I just realized I got this item called the Twin Crooks Pendant. I used it and it apparently summoned two PS1 graphics anime woman as bosses. And apparently, we are also trapped inside this white rectangle box. I am going to be fully honest here with you guys. What the fuck are these two bars? I am not sure what's happening on my screen right now. And I'm not sure I want to understand it. But what I know is I do not want to write a script trying to comprehend these two midlife crisis anime women that just watched Dangan Ropa and decided to make it their entire personality. Do you guys remember the times all of us used to mash random buttons on the arcade when we were a kid? Yeah, that's what I did during the entire fight. And it worked, so moving on. I bought a jetpack from the steampunker NPC. I do not like the sound this thing emits. I expanded our base by building more NPC prison boxes. On that night, I decided to try to fight all the three mechanical bosses at once. Let's just say that Yamato isn't as overpowered as I thought. And I got my guts rearranged by three mechanical abominations. Phenomenal. I killed Destroyer once more just to satisfy my cravings for blood loss. Then I went to the jungle to drill down some chlorophyte ores. Saying drill down instead of mining sounds kinda uncanny. I bought a lot of accessory material from this NPC, and I crafted a whole Ankh shield alongside a star veil. I love quality of life mods. I also got a new starfire ability called Kiwami Ryuken, aka the developers are fucking weaboos. Then I went to the underground jungle to find Plantera's bulb. I cleared the area surrounding it to make an arena. Then it is time to destroy the luscious flashlight of nature. Oh dear lady, Plantera truly deserves the title of Mother Nature. Before continuing on, some non-YouTube monetization friendly innuendos are coming. So if you're a family friendly throughout the enthusiast, skip to 20 seconds ahead. All I'm saying is if there is a hole, there is a way. Like the wise prophet Waffle Time once said, Smash. Plantera's succulent luscious lips are to die for. I'd let this plant crush over me and eat me alive. Okay, this is getting a bit too far. Let's kill her with style before she seduces us even further. Now our Yamato deals 100 damage. Our next task is to find the Golem's temple. After entering the temple, we are warmly greeted by getting impaled with a spirit death trap. How friendly of them. In response to such warm greeting, I had to repay their kindness by committing genocide to the whole desert race. I can already hear their screams of happiness, they must be enjoying it. Then I found the Golem's arena. After making a quick arena, I summoned the golem itself, aka the most pathetic and obese boss in Troaria. Exercise? I thought you said exercise! <laughs> Have you considered losing some weight? Maybe it is time to stop going to McDonald's because you are going to make fucking die. It doesn't really matter if I kill Golem right now because this guy is gonna die in 3 hours anyway due to high cholesterol level, inflicting a fatal level of cardiac arrest. I also tried to use the Starfarer counter-attack thing, which did nothing? I don't know. 
All I know is it is very satisfying to kill fat people. I defeated a few more golems for the drops. Now our Yamato deals 110 damage. As I went home, I crafted a beetle wings. Finally, a proper hard mode wing. After that, I got some life roots and mined down some more chlorified ores. I used the ores to craft a chlorified armor, which I turned into beetle armor. I stupidly chose the scale mail variant, which I will soon regret later. Then I summoned a solar eclipse. As I needed a moonstone from the enemies in the solar eclipse, and also a Neptune shell. I needed these two accessories to complete the cell shell shell. As it turned night, I decided to go to the dungeon. I encountered a Martian probe while I'm building an arena beside the dungeon. I decided starting a Martian invasion wouldn't be a bad idea, a decision I will soon come to regret later. Then I committed manslaughter to the four Burger King workers to summon the lunatic cultist. I swear, Burger King is the place people go when they hit rock bottom. I am not even joking when I say their burger tastes like cardboard. I probably just just ruin any possible future sponsorship I can get with Burger King. Honestly, I don't know how to narrate the Lunatic Cultist fight. The fight is just as bland as Burger King burgers. So I'm not too far off the script. At least we defeated the cultist with style. Now our Yamato deals 120 damage. Once I got back home, I just realized that there is a Martian invasion ongoing. It went quite smoothly at first. I was able to exterminate all the aliens with ease. But once the Martian saucer started spawning, let's just say that I lost my shit. Even though I did not get any loot, at least the event has ended. Thank god for no more Martian saucers. I switched back my Starfarer ability to the sword one, because I prefer impaling my enemies with a giant anime sword. Then I decided to try and use this item called the Unsolid Canvas. Oh god, it is the supreme gay rainbow witch. This Lebanese fucking killed me with his rainbow propaganda. Now how about the other summoning item, the Ancient Crown? Is that a Dark Souls Knight? My guy, I think you are lost. This land is not the kingdom of Lordran. It is much worse. It is Troaria. Why is this guy extremely tanky? My hand fucking hurts. I think I got Carpal Tunnel from fighting this boss. A Dark Knight straight from medieval ages shooting laser beams. Okay, that seems reasonable enough to me. Right when I thought it's over, it straight up gave me a cutscene. Upon my holy blade, the very world. Lies in balance. Yes, I did not expect a cutscene either. Just before I was able to comprehend on what just happened, the knight brutally slashed me apart with his giant red sword. Awesome! I tried to fight the gay witch woman again, but I just kept on dying because I could not understand the rainbow attack. No, I do not believe in the power of friendship. So I decided to just fight the retired Dark Souls boss first. If I told you guys already that this boss is more tanky than the entire US military, I have to say that this mod is not the best at balancing boss's HP. That was sarcasm because this was fucking terrible. Finally, after like 10 minutes, it turned to its phase 2. Alright, how do you dodge this giant sword attack? Hmm, makes enough sense to me. I was extremely close to dying. Just like me in real life, I am in constant state of pain and agony. Please, don't you dare have a phase 3. Who decided it was a good idea to put poorly telegraphed laser beam attacks to a Dark Souls Knight boss, slap some corny one-liner voice lines, and give it a health bar so tanky, it instantly causes Carpal Tunnel to anyone 20 meters away from his location. But I guess the sprite and biggest red sword does look cool though. I gotta give that to them. After like 20 minutes of constant pain, fortunately there was no phase 3. And I finally defeated the knight. Did I defeat it? Oh my god, I defeated it! Holy shit, I defeated it! Guess what? I did not get any useful loot from the boss. Absolutely phenomenal. Now our Yamato deals 130 damage. And at least I got this new Starfarer ability. It summons a giant spinning red sword. That is very badass. Also, I'm going to pretend this gay witch boss never existed. While doing the solar pillar, I had a sudden realization. The shell for my beetle armor is probably gonna be way better than the scale mail. Because our Yamato deals true damage, not melee. So I finished off the solar pillar, then I went back home to replace the beetle scale with shell. After doing so, I cleared the rest of the boring yet annoying Yi Yi as haircut celestial pillars. I teleported back home and prepared myself for the final boss of Terraria, a giant space squid with hentai addiction, also known as Moon Lord. My plan was to defeat all the cores at once, so I wouldn't get overwhelmed by the floating eyes. Let me tell you, it was extremely hard to land a judgment cut against Moon Lord. This squid can't stop moving. Can I win the battle against Moon Lord with our 130 damage Yamato? Come on, come on, come on, you. Ah, 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 ah. Oh shit, shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Ah.
That answers the question pretty well. I decided to improve some of my stuff first. I bought a lot of accessory stuff from this NPC. I crafted a Master Ninja gear which lets me dash and dodge enemies attack. And I finally upgraded my boots into Terra Spark boots. I also maxed out my life roots. Last but not least, I bought some potions from this NPC. Then I crafted a Celestial Sigil. And now let's try to fight the Space Squid again. On the second attempt, we were extremely close to winning. However, like my ability to maintain a relationship. Of course, I had to screw it all up at the end. Ah oh, shit! Fuck! So I decided to reforge some of my gears. Then I caught a prismatic lace wing, and I slaughtered it to summon the Empress of Light. Hello my child, do thy wish for a motherly figure? Shut up woman, I do not wish to be horny anymore, I just want to be happy. Totally not an excuse for my erectile dysfunction, help, it doesn't get hard anymore. What is that smell? Are you a gacha game player? Please help me with my Honkai Star Rail gacha addiction. I need to get Momi Kafka. Last time I took a shower was the last time I touched a woman. Never. Well, that was a quick battle. Defeating Empress of Light allows us to get her wings and soaring insignia, allowing us to have infinite and fast flight. And now our Yamato deals 140 damage. I think we are now ready to face Moon Lord for the final time. This is the attempt. I've been thinking about it. How does Moon Lord reproduce? He has no pennies. Like, how does Moon Lord pee and shit? Does everything just fall over from his ribcage? Just a thought. I had in mind. I landed a clean judgment cut hit on Moon Lord's right hand. Soaring insignia and Empress of Light Wings really made the Moon Lord fight extremely easy. I obliterated his left hand core, and I did a yi yi ding dong to the core on its head, leaving Moon Lord's heart exposed. Imagine not having a testicle. Can't be me. Speaking of testicles, do you guys know that squid can only have sex once in their entire life? Because they will fucking die if they do more. Yep, I am not joking. Look it up. Poor Moon Lord, never even having the opportunity to do it once. We successfully defeated the Moon Lord. However, the game is not finished yet. We still have the stars above mod content. After witnessing Moon Lord's glorious death animation, I opened his treasure bag, and we got the best wings in the game, Celestial Starboard. We also unlocked some new skills in the Starfarer menu. It is time to fight the homosexual Rainbow Witch again. You're just a cis, white, privileged, heterosexual scum. I don't think those words exist in the dictionary. Either way, you're about to find out what a minor inconvenience is. I'm going to cancel you on twitter.com. Jokes on you, woman. I uninstalled Twitter, and it is now called X. Super Gateway Slash! Please don't cancel me on Twitter. But yeah, we defeated Penthesilia, the Witch of Ink. I also just found out that we can travel to different planets. Yes, during this entire time, turns out us, the player, can travel to different planets via the Starfarer menu. I was too dumb to realize nor to use this feature. I upgraded the Stella Glyph or whatever the name of this crystal is, and it allowed me to travel to different planets, ranging from Crimson Team ones, Jungle Team one, and even a whole spaceship. You can even talk to an anime cat girl. I am not joking about this part. Honestly, I feel quite dumb. Why did I not do this earlier? I think it might be a bit too late to explore the planets now. So help me get this video to 12,000 likes if you guys want me to make a proper stars above mod video. Anyways, back to our mainland, China. After slaughtering Moon Lord for the second time, I noticed the sky has turned piss yellow. According to the stars above Discord fellas, it means danger. So I crafted a whole solar armor set. And I decided to use this item called the Progenitor's Wish. We get to fight the Warrior of Light. I am very sure this boss design is inspired by a lot of other game franchise. It does not feel like Terraria at all. And let's just say that the fight is a bullet hell mania. The warrior cycles between his attacks, indicated by a charge meter. Also, he has very corny one-liner voice lines. As I took his health down to 50%, he regenerated his health back to full, which marks the beginning of his phase 2. And during this phase, he has even more bullet hell mania. I was very unprepared for what bullshit his phase 2 has to offer. Did I also mention that this boss has fucking insta-kill attacks? I am perfectly fine. I switched my Starfarer ability to the one that can heal me called the Garden of Avalon. We successfully took Warrior of Light down to his second phase once more. Is this Undertale? Can someone please help me explain what game am I playing? We have to move our heart when it's orange, but we have to stay still when it's blue. Oh god, oh fuck, please, I can't understand what's going on. Thank god it stopped. I am very sure Warrior of Light, despite looking like a Final Fantasy character, is heavily inspired by Sons from Undertale. I mean, look at those Gaster Blaster and the whole Undertale attack sequence. I am very confused on what direction the dev is trying to reach with this decision, but nonetheless, I'd have to say it is quite funny and interesting. The Warrior is quite tanky, and admittedly, the fight is quite hard, due to a lot of insta kill attacks, requiring the player to be very cautious. This is it, the Warrior is on low HP. Right when Warrior of Light was about to release, his ultimate attack, and I was about to unleash all the violence coming inside of me to finish him off. 
A white-haired woman, Origami Tomichi Wannabe, appeared out of nowhere. She is apparently creating a huge black hole to consume Warrior of Light. Uh, woman, this is not the right time and place to exercise your crippling for fetish. Wait, no, this can't be. This was supposed to be my ultimate battle, yet my spotlight is stolen by a woman. No, this can't be. I can't let a woman steal my spotlight. I must overtake my spot. With all the rage, <laughs> with all the rage coming inside of me, our Yamato regains his true damage plus 210 damage from all the bosses we have defeated. I said goodbyes to our beloved cat girl one last time. And now we shall be ready to enter the 4 dimension. Show yourself, you white haired Emilia wannabe scum. Rem is much better than you. You fool, you can't defeat me. I have 5,000 hours of playtime in Genshin Impact, so I must be a true gamer. God, the woman is mentally disabled. Little did she know, I am even more mentally disabled. I have crippling gacha game addiction. I kept on hitting the woman until we were greeted with a cutscene. I can see there is no more point to holding back. Know that I have given you ample time for surrender. During her phase 2, we are teleported to the moon. I don't know how we're breathing right now. It looks like the woman has an arsenal consisting of weapon references from other video games. The phase 2 is fairly quick as we were greeted with the cutscene once more. Now we're on her phase 3. The woman straight up copied our judgment cut attack that was supposed to be our signature attack. But yes, as you can see, in her phase 3, the woman can release even more attacks that are straight up references to a ton of other video games. I have a feeling this is all just a really bad fever dream of a 16 year old weeaboo that gets bullied at the school for wearing Genshin Impact merch. Because there is no way a woman knows this much video games. I haven't touched a woman in 3 years. Wait, is that, is that the Murasama? No, 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 you will never be him, you're a woman. I'll have to say, the fight is quite hard. The final clash between a tax evading citizen wielding the strongest sword known to mankind and a mentally disabled woman wielding budget Murasama alongside her other Weabu collections. Who will win? Oh, don't worry about it. Those two griefs in the background are just for decoration. And at last, after all the clashing of our swords, we defeated the woman. Well, that was anticlimactic. But for some reason, it just felt unsatisfying. The urge to beat anime woman is still there. But no, I gotta keep my urge down or else I'll be cancelled on Twitter. We got back to our home base and we crafted the final weapon called the Ultima Thule. But no, even after obtaining the ultimate weapon of mass destruction, having the ability to turn the player into a black hole that is able to end all of humanity and life forms, it still is not enough. What is there? What is missing? I think I found it. I need to beat more anime woman. Get this video to 12,000 likes to join Virgil in his quest to avoid paying child support and beat more anime woman. Virgil will return.